professional candidates, and we do hope, very much hope, and plan to expand the network to include those folks. The biggest problem with the, is that the FEC data is pretty messy and there are a lot of mistakes, and so we are not finished cleaning that, but it, uh, you are right, and I uh, should have put that on something that we wanted to do. Uh, I think that is really important. And it is quite possible that they are, uh, they, they don't exhibit factions uh, or too many pre strong preferences when they deal with each other, but it could be the case when they are trying to support the efforts of uh, challengers in open seat elections that they exhibit uh, some tendencies, preferences, that they are more likely perhaps to give to members of their home state or home region. Uh, yes, that's something that we need to look at, I agree. Yes? Um, so just to go back, so one of the earlier slides you showed was on this uh, sort of modularity over time. Mm -hmm. and, and what it, I think it showed was that uh, uh, modularity is essentially, I guess, decreasing right, over time and that, uh, and that you're not getting these factions popping up. Mm -hmm. So what I think that says, so yeah, so, so what I think that says, right, is that the strategy being employed for contributions is that you're just contributing to everybody. So you're not sort of strategically picking out who you're contributing to, but rather you're just sort of carpet bombing and saying, I'm going to contribute to everybody in the hope that this sort of develops a very good network and I can always rank whatever votes I need down the road. So to pick up on Jen's point about a story, right, when using, when thinking about networks over time then, what might be interesting is if instead of looking at the more recent time period, right, look at the strategies in the earlier part of your data set and see how sort of people picked their, uh, picked the folks who they wanted to contribute uh, to. Uh, I know there's some literature now in, in network literature that talks about sort of, well, exactly that's just, you know, early on when people got interested in networks, they started thinking, okay, we just need to connect to everybody, right? But what people are starting to say is, well, that's not a very efficient network. So what it seems like is if you look at the literature right now, or if you look at your data set right now, you're not gonna pick up very efficient network behavior. So in terms of sort of implications for strategizing your way through contributions, you may want to actually just focus on the earlier part of your data set and see how people strategically picked and how successful those were those the choices were. Um, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, we do very much want to get to sort of that micro level tie creation yeah, stage. Right. Um, I, I also sort of think um, that uh, it's important to remember that the, even though density has been increasing, and I agree with you, and the total number of contributions have been increasing, it's, the density is still quite low as a social network compared to other social networks we've observed in Congress, specifically uh, with respect to the co-sponsor uh, network data. Um, so I think it's important to realize that very few members are sort of carpet bombing and giving to everybody. Uh, you know, even the, the, the the most powerful leaders that are making many contributions are still, you know, on the order of giving to, you know, 100, uh, 130, 150 members of their caucus. Okay, so you know, part of that might, it, part of that can't be just need because we know that there are very few congresses where we have more than 40 incumbents running in tough elections. So part of that, and this is something we want to get to, might be establishing a war chest for future elections, establishing a war chest to run for a future Senate election. Uh, and finally, it perhaps, and this is something that we'd like to try and uh, understand as well, is if members are, if some of these members in the middle of the network that are both givers and receivers, are they pastors? Are they, are they there so that uh, certain leaders can increase the gifts that they are giving to members who need the money? So in some sense, in a given election, there's an upper bound on how many members actually need money, need to spend it today, uh, need to amass a war chest. And I think that there's, there are features of the network that we haven't exploited in that way. Because you know, those sort of uh, substantive caps uh, aren't necessarily common in, in many networks. And so we, I think we, we have to do more in uh, sort of characterizing the political features of these networks. Yeah. I'm sort of surprised that uh, I'm reading from one thing that Jack English didn't appear mm -hmm. uh, in the late 80s as he's making his run. Uh, and so, I mean, he is, he is pretty central. I would have thought he would have been among the most of the 
No, we have we have built in the leadership pack, so GoPack is associated with him. Uh, but if he's donating, say, directly to the Republican Congressional Campaign Committee, that wouldn't show up here, correct? Yes, uh, and you know he is still quite central. He is not uh, necessarily the highest, but he is still quite central. Um, Our local congressman David Dreyer donated pretty heavily to the yes. Article C, but not. No, Dreyer actually is one of the most central members okay. in the Republican Congress. Uh, Dreyer, Dreyer was uh, the you know one of the most central members with our measure uh, in 2002 and 2004. The last election, he just donated to our Triple C, though. Ah. Plus a couple minor presidential Yes. So I'm, I'm not into this literature, but so the key question is why are they giving this money? And you're looking at the possible leadership advance, that's one of the things, but uh, it would seem to me maybe there are a lot of other issues. Do you have a community that's characterized by, <clears throat> I mean, people maybe being opposed to public financing of abortions? Do you have a community that's, I don't know, in other ways? And other questions like um, the people who contribute to those who share their funds, are they getting their money's worth out of those who receive the funds from the people they give them to? And does that impact on their giving? I, I don't know. There are all sorts of questions which I, I, I couldn't pick up. Maybe you're getting into them but from what you said. I mean, some of these we very much want to get into. Uh, again, we hope to get to the micro-level models of why a member is giving to another. Uh, in general, uh, the literature, uh, when people have gone out to try and find sort of vote-buying type uh, relationships, they haven't been able to recover those. Um, and finally, with the idea that you know maybe there are these small communities based around single issues, such as abortion, uh, I mean, part, that's part of the reason we use the, uh, the algorithmic community detection as opposed to creating our own, because we are maybe not so creative to think of every possible uh, theoretically organized community we could look at. And so these, these algorithms should pick up anything if they're there. Now something maybe we need to do a better job at is, is looking at the communities that have been detected, looking at these factions, and trying to see what it is about them that connects them. Now they are pretty loose. But there is still some, we still are able to classify them into factions, and we can exploit that to see, you know, if there is anything that makes them sort of hang together, even a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, on your Pelosi slide, when you showed how she, when she was making a run, that she was going up in contributions, do we see this as just a part of the election cycle? Like, when you come in, you don't have a, lot, a, a large war chest to give out, but over time, you garner more influence, and you just... But just by general being elected over and over, you give more money out. So here's or, a slide I didn't show you, which is uh, seniority uh -huh. and centrality in the House. Okay, and so uh, the the solid line is uh, the more recent period uh, since the Republican Revolution. The dotted line is the earlier period, and what we see is that, and on that um, the x-axis is the number of years that a member has been in Congress, and and we see there is uh, somewhat of an increase. As a member uh, is a is a gain seniority, if you will, but the the bigger difference is is sort of the secular change across periods. The later period uh, being you know uh, members being much more active in their contribution patterns. But yeah, so that we are quite concerned about you know sort of the the seniority effect that as they gain uh, access to the donors that are giving them money, they are then able to act as donors in this network, right? Because again, we are only still looking at a very small slice of the overall contribution network, which doesn't just include members of Congress and candidates for office, but includes PACs and individual donors and parties and so forth. So, you know, we have, you know, even though this seems really messy and complicated and it makes my um, ears bleed sometimes, uh, it is still a pretty like small and manageable portion of, of some sort of overall contribution network. Yeah. Um, you may have already said this. Can you bring the, da the data back much further before 85, or is it uh, uh, possible? 
There, I mean, yes, we, there, there's going to be some 